Welcome to the Manufacturing Masters Podcast with your host, Allison DeFord. To quote Jim Collins, author of Good to Great, the requirement for building a great company takes 1% vision and 99% alignment. What does that mean? Well, today's guest is going to help you understand and execute on this whole idea of alignment coupled with vision. Today, we're going to talk about how manufacturers get things done with Manufacturing Masters expert, Monty Peterson. He's the principal from the CDA group. They are a premier leadership training firm specializing in strategy execution management. The whole idea is to demystify and simplify strategy execution into a discipline within your organization to make it easier for you to have that vision create that strategy, and then to really make it meaningful and understandable for every member of your organization so that everybody is working together to get things done. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode. We appreciate you and value the work that you do every day. Everybody, here we grow. So Monty, welcome to the Manufacturing Masters podcast. I'm so excited you're here. Thanks, Allison. It's an honor to be here, and it's uh, it's always great to uh, to see and be with you. Well, I appreciate that. Now, it's we both realized it's been a couple of years since you were on the last podcast, and we will definitely have to correct that in go going forward. We need to have you back uh, a lot sooner than than a couple of years. But I'm excited to have you here because. You're not only an expert on the Manufacturing Masters platform, but you are an expert in real life. And you are so good at helping leaders, manufacturers, um, companies get things done. And I'm excited because we're going to talk about that today and help everyone listening get more done. And that boils down to execution and execution without leadership is um, it will never happen, right? So we're going to talk about leadership and execution and what does that start with? Like where, where does a company start? Let's say they've done some stuff in the past. They obviously there's a leadership in place and they've executed, let's say they want to kind of revamp. Yeah, you know, it, it starts with um, needing a structured framework for thinking about strategy and how we would act on that. And, that, and that's essentially what strategy execution is, is that and, and what, what you what you said, how you described everything, was was inherently correct. That it it, it starts with leadership, right? Because if you don't have the people at the top that understand the vision of the organization and what they're trying to do and how they move that through the organization, so everybody understands it, you won't you won't have execution. You won't get shit done, right? Because your people are going to be so far disconnected from what you're trying to do that you're just you're not going to be able to bring them close enough to succeed at a high level you you may survive you may get through you know uh, you know several years but 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 you won't optimize your results so it won't be sustainable no it won't, won't be sustainable at all you'll 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 go in 10 different directions trying to figure out you know why it's not working and why you can't be successful now I'm curious about where I want to ask you what a good strategy looks like. I'm curious from your experience, how often do you modify? Like is a strategy something that you should put together as a company and it's, you know, the beginning of every year? Should you put together this strategy that's like short-term plus long-term? 
in your experience, what what kind of time frame makes sense for a good strategy? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's it's a great question because it's something that that I would say probably nine out of every ten organizations does wrong. Mm. Uh, you you really have to just trash the calendar when it comes down to strategic thinking and and how you how you're going to do strategy. Um, and that's just, that's just because the strategy is only going to, it's, it's going to happen in its own time. But really what that means, it's, it's, it's going to be inherent on your ability to do the right things, you know, set, set strategic objectives each year mm -hmm. that are going to, that are going to meet your long-term vision or what you want to see the organization accomplish. So, so, so if you, if you were going to do this in an orderly fashion, you would, you would cast the vision, right? As as the leadership, as the leader of the leadership team, you own that piece, and you you have to basically demonstrate or you know tell keep telling the organization where you're going and why why you're going to do that. And then you you as far as what a good strategy is, it's um, it's nothing more than the design for how you solve a high stakes challenge that you have inside your business. If you boil it all down, that's real, you know, and this is, this is similar to the marketing world, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but there, but there's three, there's three components to, to a good strategy. And this, you know, while, while we're talking about, you know, California, this, this comes from Richard Rummels, who is one of the more well-known authorities. He's at the Anderson School at UCLA. And he talks about strategy being condensed in a kernel, like I guess a, a kernel of corn. Um, I haven't made that connection, but he calls it a kernel. Um, and it, has, it has three components. And, and the first is you have, you have to have a clear diagnosis. So you have to know the, the, the problem or the high stakes challenge of what you're going to solve. And then, and then you need a guiding policy. And I, and I look at the guiding policy as sort of being the parameters that you put on your organization so you stay focused on what you're trying to accomplish. So it's 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 what it's a policy that dictates your actions and behaviors, and then and then the, the third component is just a coherent set of actions that drive you towards your strategic objectives. What are we going to do on the ground in the in the factory on the shop floor to you know to to solve this high stakes challenge that that we have, and so you know. Getting a good strategy is probably the number one mistake that that causes strategy failures. That people people never get to a good strategy because they go out and they hire a consultant, and you know they introduce a lot of complexity. They you know they have too many priorities. You know they're trying to solve too much, and 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 then, and then that that's all before they they go out and try and implement it. Yeah. So 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 you have that, and then on top of that, you have this baked in irrational thinking that that you have to do it every year or that you know that, that that it has to happen in a time frame or that we can set a three to five year window for this and we can we can do it in that and and again you can set those lofty requirements but but the reality is your strategy more than likely you're going to learn some things along the way so if you can if you can get about 80 percent of the way there with your diagnosis you're going to learn some things on the rest, the rest of the way, and you're going to be able to probably solve for it. But, but as far as setting it against a, a window of time, um, that's it's, that's just insanity to to think that way. And and, and that, that's not that's not a very popular way. But you, you can kind of see why strategy execution is is this fuzzy, ambiguous thing out there, and kind of why I'm on a mission to sort of demystify and simplify that for people because we we don't understand strategy, and we sure as hell don't understand execution. And so I'm just there trying to bridge that gap and, and, and help people so that they, they, they have an easy, simple way to create a strategy and then go out and act on it and be successful, get the results they're looking for. Well, and, and uh, you bring up a good point. Do you see oftentimes that the strategy that gets created is just way too convoluted, way too much? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the reasons why why they fail or fall short of expectations. A, a lot of times, organizations are abandoning their strategy two or three months in because you know the the, the day to day has just so overwhelmed them. They can't they can't stay focused on it. And you know, and the statistics around this are abhorrent. 
you know, in terms of once a strategy is spent, the amount of time that an organization spends on it, it's it's like something like you know less than less than two hours a month or something. So obviously, if if, if the strategy is not driving your actions, you know, you're basically just managing in the day to day. That, that's all you've got is what, what's in front of you and what you know, and that's what your focus becomes. Well, and that's where I feel like a good leader is it's so is so important because I work with a number of manufacturers and I can honestly say I'm fortunate to witness really good leadership in each of those manufacturing businesses and because without the leader if you will taking the time right to get out of the fires you know and take that time to think take that time to review take that time to assess to create to just think and then to bring the team together regularly to say let's take a look at what's what we planned and let's take a look at what we're actually doing um i feel like without that leadership people just will end up running amok or i, I start to see uh departments get very siloed and i feel like a good leader keeps everything unified right so that all the departments are working together in alignment yeah, I, I I can't argue with any any of that. I would just maybe amend leadership to say that that it takes courageous leadership because you, you need you need a strong leader, right? Someone who is, you know, someone who is willing to stand alone at, at many different times and just say, you know, screw this, we're going to do this. We're 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 marching forward, and this is this is our focus, and this is what we said we were going to do, and. Um, there's there's a lot of leaders out there who kind of lead in in rank and title only, and and you know it's 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 just been proven those leaders just just aren't effective because they they're not willing to carry the you know carry the vision and to to enforce the lengths that the organization needs to go to you know to be able to see its strategy through and 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 again to you know to execute at, a, at an optimal level. Yes, very true. Well, I was curious when a strategy breaks down, what typically happens? Like, what does that look like? Um. It, well, it, it looks it looks like several factors. Um, probably the biggest one is that it, there's just a there's just a lack of dialogue throughout the organization. But I, some 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 things I would tell you would be um, there's no common direction that leadership at the top isn't aligned even even amongst the you know the the leadership team they don't have a solid understanding of what their purpose is and, and what they're trying to do um, they're not making the organization's not making good choices they're not they're not setting priorities or they're setting too many priorities um, there's weak adoption. You may have, you may have belief in the in the strategy, in the top layers, right? The people that the people that developed and built it may have fallen in love with it and live it, but if if you go below that to middle level managers and down to frontline, you know personnel and supervisors and and they're disconnected, then you know if the, if the people that are there to get the work done don't know what you're trying to do. Then it you know it breaks down there, and then and then and then it just it just comes it, it just sort of rolls into chaotic execution that that you know the things that your people are doing just don't line up with you know with the strategic objectives of the organization. They're you know they'll I call it kind of hiding under a rock. They'll they'll just mm-hmm. you know go off and do do their job and not bother anybody else and try not to make waves and and. You know they'll they'll just you know at that point you're just you know you've got your you've got your team members just earning a paycheck and doing whatever you know production's necessary to to get the orders out. 
Well, and, and that doesn't that doesn't do anything for your long term interests. Right. True. And in um, in one of your videos on the platform, I loved how you talk about making the strategy meaningful and purposeful at every level. So my question to create that scenario, do you feel like it's important to include lower mid and lower level people in the development of the strategy so that I'm picturing the opposite and, and how that would feel. So let's say leadership calls a meeting and says, we've been to a retreat and we've put together this incredible vision and strategy. Here's what it is. And you're all going to follow it. Like that, that to me would be a disaster. You're not going to yeah, have alignment. <laughs> no, and then, and then everybody gets up and shares, and and then and then and then as yeah. they as the as the meeting closes or the or the uh, the show and tell closes, they're all waving it and saying, "I'm going back to work. Let me know when you get there." Yeah, yeah. There's no buy-in or meaning or purpose. So, how it, do you have any suggestions for how to create that? And and I'm thinking from the get-go, you know, not just when it's ready to, when it's time to execute, but to get that buy-in ahead of time. Yeah. Here's what I would share, Allison, is that you're never going to have the bandwidth and the capability of, um, of involving everyone on the team in the development of the strategy. So, so leadership still needs to own that, but they, they need to make sure that everybody in the organization is still touching the strategy and 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 the best way to do that is just it's, it's just through empowering the people at every level of the organization to 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 strategically translate the strategy into what it means for them at their level so so once the strategy is is known and released um maybe the the, the, the senior leadership level goes down to the area manager or director level and has a, has a conversation with them and says, here's what we're, here's what we're, we're planning on doing. Let us know, you know, let us know how you feel about it and tell us what parts you like or what you don't like and tell us what you think you can do and what you can't do. So you want to create a feedback loop. And, and obviously the lower you get in the organization, the shorter that loop will be, but, but you still want people understanding what it is that leadership wants you to do and what you have to do and you're at that level at that particular level for them to contribute because those are those are really key and in, in inspiring and motivating the people on your team because if they if they understand what drives successful execution in the organization they're more than likely to you know to participate when you know when they know what this means for them and and again it all starts at the top if if, if everybody isn't committed to the organization first and the best interest of the organization, that's how we all win. Right. Right. If they, if, if they, if they don't get that piece, you know, when it comes down to them, they're, they're just going to do what they've normally done. They're not, they're not going to change anything or, you know, try and affect or, you know, positively impact the results that they, they create. Yes. Well, and I know one thing you talk about <clears throat> getting people focused on better execution, you talk about a performance agreement. So what does something like that look like? Yeah, yeah. You know, performance agreements are something that 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 were created out of I guess the 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 lack of of uh the, the lack of what a job description would normally do. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, Job descriptions aren't very useful. I mean, they're, they're useful for hiring, and, and and they're they're important documents. You know, they tell you what the job is and what are the requirements, and you know, if there's if there's regulatory or compliance things, you need all that stuff. I, I'm I'm not arguing against completely against job descriptions, but you can't lead or manage people through a job description. 
right? I mean, you can give it to somebody, they'll read it, and then what, you know, it ends up in a drawer or, you know, no, nobody ever, you know, pulls it out again. So, so, how, you know, how do you get people, how do you get people acting and doing, you know, what you need them to do specifically, you know, in, in those key areas? And, uh, you know, performance agreements are really just an agreement between a manager and a direct report that, that really lays out three things. And that, the first is just a set of primary job responsibilities. What is it that the organization needs me to do? And it's just four or five of the of the things that, you know, the organization, if, if you do these, this is almost like your first summer job when you're a kid, right? You, you go in and, and you're, you're wet behind the ears and, and, you know, your supervisor goes, all right, kid, if you're going to, if you're going to succeed at this job, these are the three things you have to do. <laughs> do these three things. Don't screw up and you'll be fine. Right. That's what a set of primary job responsibilities are. What are those things the organization counts on me doing? And, and how do I make sure that I'm doing them? And then, and then there's a set of goals and tasks that go with that because in, in every organization, you, you've got to have, in any given year, there's always one-off things that are going on, right? A new marketing plan. Maybe we're putting in a, and maybe we're, you know, we're putting in a new manufacturing process. You know, there are just things you have to learn and you have to do. What Everybody needs a set of goals related to, to those one-off things that they need to do. You know, it's not just, it's just not your day-to-day -day job. That's important. And, and, and your job, your primary job responsibilities cover that, but you know, we, we need, we need you, you know, we're working on these goals and, and, you know, having a set of continuous goals to, you know, to, to work on, to help move the organization forward. And then, and then, you know, the, the third thing is you need a meeting, you know, every, probably every 30 days. I mean, that's, that's what I, you know, that's what I preach is where you're sitting down and you're saying, okay, how are we doing against your primary job responsibilities? How are you doing on your goals and your tasks? And, if you're not, if you're not performing up to up to speed, then I own that performance agreement with you. I'm vested in your success. So I'm going to help you get realigned and get you back on track within the next thirty days. So, so that's essentially what a performance agreement does: is it, it, it keeps everybody focused on what they need to do. You know, so, so so in a sense, execution comes down to an individual level at that point. Right. And a lot, a lot of organizations don't think that's possible. They, they, they just think, you know, well, you give them a job description, you tell them what the job is, and you know, you give them the order sheets and the production forms, and you know, they're, they're going to be fine. No, it, it, none of that, none of that works. You have to have those things, but if you're not talking to your people every thirty days about their role and how they're how they're doing it, then then you're not doing your job. I'm sorry. And do you think? Um... Do you think leadership that makes that mistake is kind of in that set it and forget it mindset? Because it's easier not to talk to all those people every 30 days, right? That takes time and effort. So it seems like that sh that's got to be one of your priorities as a leader and one of your... Um, Part of your strategy, part of a successful strategy is is making sure that those meetings happen regularly, not just even quarterly or, you know, at the end of the year. Like you said, um, and I want to jump into this too, you talk about bonus programs and how you're not necessarily a fan of the end of the year Santa Claus bonus I was wondering if you could share a little bit about your thoughts on that because I think this would be really helpful for everybody listening. Yeah, well, let, let me let me tie back the first part of your question to why it's why it's important to to have those meetings and and why leadership needs to be having those meetings because it because in in reality leadership suffers when they're not hearing all of the information and now getting all the data that's going on inside the organization, especially with, 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 with their people. And so when, when you as a manager and you're meeting every 30 days with all of your people, you're basically collecting 
wisdom, missing knowledge, information, and you're taking that up to your boss, and then they're taking it up to their boss. So, so in a perfect world where we're, where we're executing on strategy, we have this feedback loop that comes from the data and information that we're getting through performance agreements and through working directly with, with people. And so, so that, so that's, that's real critical in terms of informing leadership and giving them line of sight into what's happening in the organization. As it relates to to bonus, um, we're we're just out there, you know, and and this and this this ties into culture and engagement and turnover and and so many other problems, you know, that, that manufacturers and others are having, right? That that they're always talking about. I can't keep people. I can't hire good people. Um, this is this is all part and parcel. Why is that when you have a performance agreement in place. You have the ability to manage performance, and you 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 know, you know exactly how people are doing because you're having a check in every thirty days. Now, I I don't want to confuse performance management with a performance agreement because because they're 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 totally different. Performance agreement is really a coaching, guiding, leading session held kind of through a 30 every 30 day progress meeting performance management is basically an hr driven function that basically says you get this amount of raise or or you're going to be promoted or demoted or you know whatever you you know you've got to do something at the end of the year that's that's performance management but but when you when you're sitting down every 30 days with your people and you know how they're working and how they're doing that last conversation at the end of the year, when you're talking with them about their bonus or their raise, it's a pretty easy conversation because you're with them every step of the way. You know how they've performed and they know how they've performed. I mean, you know, and, and I've had this experience too, you know, you're kind of like biting your nails at the end of the year, wondering whether your boss likes you or whether you're, you know, you're even going to get, you're going to get a bonus or a raise just because, because you, you, you've been so poorly communicated with throughout the year. So so yes, the 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 bonus structure um, it, it has to have some teeth and and you know having being able to manage people at an individual level and setting up performance agreements with them is a surefire way to make sure that you know they're 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 being paid you know for for what they're doing um, and then and then and then again the, the courageous leadership question seeps in there too because you have to be able to have the hard conversation because some of those some of those conversations aren't always going to be pleasant. And mm -hmm. again, if somebody isn't meeting their primary job responsibilities for two or three months in a row, then you're, you're probably having a discussion with them about how they can exit the organization, you know, which, which is something that, you know, we don't do either. Right. We just wait until it becomes too big a problem and we give it to, yeah, we give it to HR and say, here you, here you go deal with it. And then, and then we end up writing, a, writing them a check to go away. I mean, what, that's nonsense. You don't have to do that. Yeah. So this is just, this is such a, a more proactive approach. And I'm a huge fan of that because I think a lot of times, especially with small manufacturing um, businesses, we end up feeling like a firefighter as the leader. And, you know, when you have a larger organization, I feel like you have a bit of luxury with, you know, maybe multi-tiered levels of, of management beneath you who can help with execution. Um, I think it's important to be proactive, especially when you're smaller, so that you don't get caught up reacting at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Small to middle-sized businesses and manufacturers have a have a decided advantage in this because they they can they're they're close enough they're close enough to the floor and what's going on. They can see what they can see what's happening, and and again, if if, if they have this steady stream of feedback coming in, you know, via you know via the you know the mid-level management or what you know whatever you want to call it then they know how things are going. They know where to get involved. They know where to stay away. They, you know, they, they know, they know who's progressing well and who's not. And yeah, those are all, those are all things that you can manage. from. But, 
give everybody a job description and send them out there and and you know give them a you know give them a a worksheet for the day and you know you got bedlam. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we're at the end of our time, which I say this every time, and people probably laugh. I always feel sad because there's so much we could cover, and we'll have to save it for another episode. But is there anything I didn't ask you? that you wish I would have, or that you would like to share as a, you know, kind of a wrap up to how manufacturers can get things done. So, so I, I think you probably asked this in an indirect fa fashion and I, and I, I may not have given you the, the, the room to, uh, to hear it, but I, I would just say, you know, you, you you need a framework. If if you're gonna if you're gonna do anything, I mean, so so many times in terms of strategy execution, if if we don't have a framework or something that guides our actions, we're we're just out there with a with a disparate group or or you know bunch of tools and resources that are maybe solving issues here and there, but they don't but they don't work collectively. Right. You almost need yeah. You almost need one umbrella. You know that sort of covers what it is you're you're trying to do, and and that's this that's this whole idea of having a you know having a framework so that year in and year out you have a process for how you how you go about accomplishing things. So setting strategic objectives. What are those three or four things that we need to do this year that are going to help drive our strategy and help catapult us to our longer term vision? Right. We've got those objectives and we and we want to you know we want to effectively translate those through the organization get everybody working and contributing and get and and then when we get the results this is probably the one thing we get the results you know are we analyzing them are we are we studying them do we know where things work do we do we know where things went off the rails you know we, we don't spend enough time with the results normally we if we had a good year, we you know we pop the champagne and you know we set a new forecast, ten percent higher, and we move on, right? Right. You know, you you got to spend time with the results, and 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 that's that that's another area that's that's sorely neglected in this whole process. So anyway, that's that's probably that. what I would I would share. I think that is so valuable, and I just I appreciate you so much. You're such a great contributor on LinkedIn. If you listening or watching this are not already connected with Monty on LinkedIn, please do that. Um, and you're just, you're an amazing human. I've known you for multiple years now online. We've never met in person, um, but I can say you are so consistent and passionate. And one thing I love about you is that you yourself are always learning and growing. And I see it come out in the things that you share. And I, I just, I think that's such an important and invaluable um, quality in a really good leader and expert. So I appreciate that about you. Well, thank you. I appreciate hearing that feedback. That's, that's good. That's good to hear. That's I try. So. <laughs> well, it's great. And I look forward to having you back soon. And if you, again, aren't subscribed to the manufacturing masters platform please do that one subscription is good for you and your entire team which still blows me away um the generosity of our founder is astounding but you know the whole goal is to help manufacturers succeed and i think that that's a brilliant way to do it and when you subscribe you can catch monty's videos on the platform and just for everybody listening and watching, we know that you have lots of choices for how you can spend your time. So we appreciate you spending this time with us on yourself, on your business. And we just want you to know that we believe in you and the work that you do really matters. So keep at it. We'll see you next time. If you're not already, subscribe to the Manufacturing Masters podcast on Apple Music or Spotify. And for a deeper dive, head on over to manufacturing-masters.com. It's everything they never taught you in school.